Hi, today I'm going to talk about how to make a custom design. I call this things to do in Fortnite. And then how to easily uh, do different color variations of it, how to have it printed on a variety of different materials that you can then make into things like clothing or uh, game accessories like game mats. Hi, welcome to Gray Lightning, my video blog about making things and playing games. And my project for today is to talk about how to use a piece of imaging software. I use Photoshop. You could use a free piece of software like Inkscape to make a digital collage like this. Now, I'm using uh, images I got off the internet and from screenshots from a video game. Uh, but you could use your digital camera pictures to do the same thing. It's the same process. If you do use images from a game, make sure that you check the company's fan art policy to make sure that you uh, don't violate it. I mean, you couldn't make this and sell it and make money off of it because that would be a violation. So check, our, check out the fan art policy. I uh, tried three different materials here. There were at least 40 different materials I could have printed on. All of them turned out beautifully. Um, this is 100% cotton that you could turn into a qu quilts or a, a clothing. This is a nice shiny waterproof material that's used to make window shades. But the most interesting is this, it's neoprene. And neoprene is this fabric that was always used to make wetsuits, but now it's very popular to make game mats or character mats. It's what mouse pads are frequently made out of. You can make coasters, you make cozies for soda cans. Most of them you just print it and cut it out and you've got what you're, you're um, making, so it's very easy. Economical, these pieces, all three of them together, custom printed, were shipped to my house for $65. So um, I think this is a great project. I'll talk about all of it in this episode. The first thing you need to do for your project is to collect up all your images into a single folder. And these are what are called PNG, .png file extension. They have transparent backgrounds. It looks like it's a solid white here, but if you do a Google search for a PNG, and here's one for the ATK, you can see this checkerboard here. That means that it's actually a transparent background. In addition to looking for PNGs, you have to care about the size to make sure that the, the size of the image is large enough for your use. Now, how do you know what size you need? The best way to do that is to create a drawing that's the size of what you're going to print. You can enter the dimensions in inches and the resolution 150 dots per inch is the lowest resolution that will look good printed. And here's my blank drawing. So if I go to the ATK that I just found and I do Control A to select it all and hold down the Control key and drag and drop it into my new drawing, I see how it fits and this is the size it comes in at. I have the ability to stretch that a little bit. I can select it. I can pull from the corner so that I can make it a little bit bigger while keeping the same aspect ratio, the same dimensions. And then what you need to do is zoom in and look to see how that looks. And what you see is exactly how it should look when it's printed. If it's clear enough and the edges aren't jagged, then that's a size that works for you. If you can't find a PNG with a clear background, the next best thing is to find one like this with a nice solid color. And you can pull that into your image editor and you can take the selection tool, draw a rectangle around it and crop the image so it's no bigger than what you need it to be. Then you grab the magic wand which selects things by color. Make sure contiguous is off. Hold down the shift key and click till you've selected all the gold together and press delete. And then you can save this as a PNG. You can export a PNG and keep it with this transparent background. The first thing I do in my photo collage is I create a layer for the colored background. And you can fill that by selecting the color that you want as the main color. You pick the paint bucket and you fill that new background layer. But it's a little boring to have it all the same color, so what I do then is I pick a color that's a little lighter or a little darker than the main color, and that's now my second color here. And then I go to Filter, Render, Clouds, and you get this nice cloud effect that uses the two colors. 
The second part of the background is a bunch of large tone-on-tone uh, -tone images. The llama is one of these, and I do an adjustment where I desaturate it and turn it into grayscale. And then I drag that into my drawing, and I size it the size I want it to be. Every time I drag something new in, it gives me a new layer for that. Then I can go to that layer, and on the opacity, I can drop the opacity down so that it's largely transparent. And this low opacity layer over the color gives it a tone-on-tone -tone look. The main part of the drawing is the, the top layers. And I'll drag in another transportation mode here, a shopping cart, so I have a couple of things here to work with. When you drop something in, uh, the first thing that I do is, is do a control T for transform. That lets me uh, stretch it. Make sure you hold down the shift key so that you don't accidentally squash the cart like I showed right there. You can also rotate it easily when it's in this transform mode. And every time you drop a new item in, it creates a new layer. Please go ahead and name that right away so that you don't get confused because there's a lot of layers in this drawing. And when I get the size of the ATK the way I want it, then another thing I did in my things to do in Fortnite uh, drawing here is I put in text. So you grab the text tool, you find a font you like, uh, you find a size that works for your drawing. You pick a color. In this example, I'm going to pick white, but in my drawing, it's actually a light gray, so it's not quite so stark. And then you type in the word and move it around to make everything look the way you want it to look. So my general strategy was to then select the layers of the things that I wanted to be a group and group the layers, give that group a name. In this case, I gave it the name of the text. And that allows you to see all the individual pieces and change them if you need to but it also allows you to move it around as a unit, and that's a lot easier when you're trying to organize your drawing. It's easy to do different color variations. You just create another layer down there where the color layers are. You go through the same process. You pick a main color. You pick a secondary color that's close to it, but not the same. You render them as a cloud, and you get that nice modeled effect. And then by turning on and off those layers, you get different color variations. So this is my actual final drawing. Uh, you can see that I've grouped all of the different um, things you can do. All of the grayed out images are together on one layer. I have three colorways. The one thing I would do differently is I was way too subtle on the color differences for my clouds, and that didn't really render in the printing. So how do you get this printed? I went to a site called Bags of Love. They print a lot of things in addition to fabric, but if you drill down on the Fabric tab, you'll see that one of the options, well, there's many options, and the one I picked is to create what they call fabric samples. And there's different sizes. I picked the largest size, which was the 33 by uh, 23 and a half. The cost, of course, is affected by the size. It's $22 to buy one of this large size. And then you have to pick your fabric. I didn't see a difference in price based on fabric, and there's so many choices. There's descriptions of each if you want to go through to try to figure out which one to pick. The last step is to put your design in, and I uploaded these designs. I You can actually put multiple on one piece if they fit, but in this case, I've sized them to exactly fit the sample, so basically I just have to drop it in and it fits perfectly. They even have volume discounts because I bought three of them instead of $22. They were $19 a piece. Learning how easy and economical it is to make custom fabric has really got me thinking of lots of new creative projects. I love to make things for gaming and gamers. If you're interested, please subscribe to my YouTube channel.